Hello everyone, I'm Alan Cavana. Welcome to the preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. Joining me as always, TNT pit reporter Marty Snyder. Marty, how you doing? I'm good, man. I thought the Vegas race was outstanding. And I, your first time in Vegas, how'd it go? It, it went, went, <laughs> went pretty well. Did you have fun? Uh, yes, I survived good. and I'm back and uh, came back with a little money and uh, had some good memories. Now you left Vegas up, so that's always a good thing. Always, man. A, good always thing. a good thing. Three races in, as you mentioned, yeah. exciting race. Matt Kenseth getting his first win for Joe Gibbs Racing. We've also now seen after three races, each manufacturer get a win. Right. Do you expect to see this parody continue with the Gen 6 car, or have you really seen one manufacturer have an well, advantage? Well, I mean, I, I think you certainly hope the parody will continue, and I mean, that's what everybody hopes for, but it, this is what we talked about last week when we talked about the Phoenix finish. It was it was Ford, Chevy, and Toyota finishing 1-2-3, and, and we kind of predicted that a Toyota would win this race. Let me see. I, yes, I did that. Yes, Matt predicted. Kenseth <laughs> picking, uh, picking him to win the race, but but no, I do think we'll see the parody, and I, and I think it's not so much the new Gen 6 car I think that's how the sport is. The sport is is that close. I think the parity is something that we are going to continue to see for the rest of the year, though, Alan. Well, that's one trend. As you said, hopefully yeah. we continue to see. Another thing we saw on Sunday was a lot of passing. Got sure. some numbers to throw at you. This is from our loop data. Mike Ford would be proud of us using his loop status. <laughs> uh, 22 lead changes with eight different leaders. That's the most since 2007 yeah. at Las Vegas. And a 1,000 more green flag passes than we saw in the 2012 race. Now, what that may indicate is that throughout the field, there was a lot of passing going on yeah. throughout the race, which could be a good sign since we have a lot of races at these mile and a half tracks. Again, do you think that's something that can continue? How much can we take away from one race? Well, you know, we certainly hope it continues. And just talking to a lot of drivers this week, they all told me that, listen, that, yeah, there was a lot more passing, but the car was completely on edge. I mean, it would be loose in one corner, tight in the next corner. The wind has a factor with that at Las Vegas, but I thought the race was outstanding. I mean, just being honest, I thought there was a lot of passing. And the thing that I liked at the end of the race was how Casey Kane was able to catch Matt Kenseth. You know, I think in the Gen 5 car, we have that scenario play out. I think Casey Kane gets to a point and he kind of stops. But you saw Kane yo-yoing, if you will, with Kenseth. Got underneath him, got side by side with him. He just couldn't pull off the pass. And, and yes, Casey Kane had a better car at the end of the race, but Matt was able to make it work and keep him behind him. But for the first race out on a mile and a half racetrack, I thought it was fantastic, Alan. And I like to think that battle at the end was as much as Matt Kenseth's talent than it was sure, yeah. uh, the car issue. Absolutely, so, absolutely. We've been to the mile and a half track. We're heading short track racing coming up next Sunday. A lot of drivers, fans excited for Bristol. Here's what Clint Boyer had to say going into next weekend. I'm looking forward to uh, to getting there. I think it's it's Bristol's awesome. You know, it's it's a shame. You, you, where else do you go that's 160,000 people watching in a sporting event? I mean, there's there's no kind of atmosphere like that in in you know the country it's just it's such a neat feeling to be able to walk in there and see the fans see the uh, the excitement level I mean it really gets you pumped up as, as a race car driver or just anybody in sports I mean it's it's the fans the crowd that gets you pumped up and there's no place like Bristol and Clint Boyer excited about the big crowd a lot of Sounds people like it yeah a lot of people <laughs> like short track racing of course we have a new car a lighter yeah. car more mechanical grip what can we expect for Bristol a short track with the Gen 6 car I think there's gonna be a couple of keys I think number one track position is gonna be huge there's really only four good strategic pit stalls at Bristol the two on each ends of the front stretch and the back stretch so you want to qualify well to get one of those pit stalls they are a huge advantage at Bristol but in talking to Steve Letard and Martin Truex Jr. this weekend they both told me something very interesting you do all of your practice on the bottom of the racetrack but by the end of the race there's enough tire wear in enough enough rubber gets in the racetrack that the top groove is actually the fast way around the racetrack and that's where Martin Truex Jr. has been really fast the last couple of years is working that top groove the problem is you've done all your practice down here on the bottom so I think the teams that really think about how can we during the race make our car work better up high I think those are the teams that are going to be good and and keep this in mind folks as you watch the race on Sunday the guy that's fast early on may not be the guy who's fast at the end of the race and I think we could see a sea change as the race goes on and maybe a little bit of a surprise winner this weekend well you talked with Kyle Busch we've know Martin Truex Jr. has been good there in the past few years yeah. now I want your pick who's going to win the race I'm going to go with Kyle Busch I mean and, and I go with him because I really think that he is obviously excellent at this racetrack he's won five times at Bristol he's very strong at this type of racetrack and he admitted to me earlier this week we've lost a little bit of speed in the last year at Bristol so they've tried to think a lot about okay where do we lose that speed and and I think teams have not been able to really prepare for Bristol as much as they would like because of the fact that 
you can't really practice for Bristol. All you can do is put it on the seven post rig. So any extra thought that's gone into this race is really going to pay off big for someone. So I'm going to go with Kyle Busch this weekend. I think he's going to be very tough. He's always a top five threat there, but I think he's going to be the guy to beat in terms of speed and for the win. I'll do you one better. I'm going to go with Brad Keselowski. He's had three top five finishes to start yeah. the year, and it seems like he's under the radar. He's a Sprint Cup champion, three finishes, three high finishes to start the year, and no one's talking about him, it seems, because he hasn't got that win yet. He talked at Vegas that he really wants that win, and that'll I think it'll come this weekend. We've seen him do it before at Bristol a few years ago. He won. They changed the track. He won again. Now, hopefully, he'll get a, I, for my sake, he'll get a win this weekend, <laughs> and I'll look like a genius now that we're back on that other Bristol. So I'm picking Brad Keselowski. You've got Kyle Busch. That would be a great battle at the end. That'd be a fun battle to watch, wouldn't it? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Marty. That does it for this week's d preview show delivered by FedEx Racing. Have a good weekend and enjoy Bristol.